Schultz and his daughter, Jill. And Anne, you had a question. Yes. I love uh, Snoopy, and I wondered how you selected a beagle as Snoopy. Snoopy didn't start off being a beagle, but I think that words that begin with the letter B are funny, and beagle is just a funny word. Uh, <laughs> the same way as it's, it's funnier if Schroeder plays Beethoven than if Schroeder plays Mozart. Yes. Uh, it just has a nice ring to it. Lisa. Um... I want to know if the animation is uh, going to be computerized in the near future. I don't think Bill Melendez uses computer uh, animation. Everything is still done by hand, and you may be interested in knowing that in each half-hour show, which is probably 27 minutes, there are about 30,000 drawings. That's why, Bill, yeah, that's why Bill works on Sundays. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Isn't that amazing? You've done a lot of performing. We were talking in, in the second segment. You've been to South America. What was the most exciting performance you've ever done? Um, it wasn't... South America was the most exciting tour for me. Some of the most exciting performances are in my shows at my dad's rink for Karen, and, and it's the hometown crowd, and... Just any performance when I skated my best would be the most exciting. Wasn't there one back in New York? You were in Ice? Yeah. yeah. That, it was called Ice, and it was a Radio City Music Hall. And that was really exciting to just be performing in that. Isn't oh, that man. an enormous place? It's huge. The stage you can't even begin to believe. Did you perform that? I did years ago. I did an industrial show for Philco. And I was a hot tube, and <laughs> other people were a cool tube. <laughs> Ever one of the voices any of the characters for peanuts have you ever tried that no yeah. i never have i don't think i'd be very good at it because even in my acting classes everyone tells me to take voice lessons <laughs> <laughs> i can't sing that's one thing i'm not attempting <laughs> well forrest you had a question yes well it refers to what you were just talking about i was wondering where they find these children who are the voices behind the characters in the tv specials some of the children are rank amateurs some of them are simply um, children of the producer or friends of his but many of them are professionals from Hollywood and these are the ones that seem to be the best our big problem of course is that they grow up mm -hmm. uh, I hate it when they grow up <laughs> <laughs> and their voice changes that's right you get a perfect lineness but we've discovered that there's a pattern to these voices there are many children who have the same voice as uh, another child who is Linus in the same way uh, all the way through we, we're trying to tone down on the Lucy voices they tend to get a little bit strident and they shriek too much, so we're always trying to keep Lucy down. I guess you're asked this all the time, but we'd be remiss not to ask it. Are you Charlie Brown? No, no. I'm a little bit of all of the characters. I'm a little bit... Uh, my sarcastic side is Lucy, my wishy-washy side is Charlie Brown, my dreaming side is Snoopy, and so on. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be a little bit of all of the characters if you're going to make them at all real. But did you have anybody else in mind or other people, specific people in your life that you thought of when you were doing the characters? No, uh, almost all of the characters are named after friends of mine, but I would never use uh, a personality or draw upon a friend that way. I just think it would be kind of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa. I was curious, what happened to Rerun? Rerun is still around. He rides on the back of his mom's bicycle now and then, and we're going to use him on some of the Saturday morning television shows, but I just run out of ideas uh, on certain subjects, and lately I haven't been able to think of anything where he is on the back of his mom's bicycle. But he's still around. Charles, you have five children, and here's Jill. She's, a, she's, she's done very well professionally. Now she's thinking about going into acting, which, as you know, is a tough business. Do you worry about your children do you kind of try and guide their careers or you just give them a free hand and say good luck i worry i worry all the time <laughs> uh, i'm a worrier i have a lot of anxieties but uh, i want them to do what they want to do and i try never to interfere like uh, i said about my own mother and dad i think i should just stay out of the way that's all <laughs> did he say anything to you before you went to los angeles or has he offered advice or does he call every once in a while to see how jill's doing yeah we call a couple times a week back and forth sometimes um he's never pushed me like he said he's always supported me the only thing he always says is do you have your plane ticket do you have some money do you know where you're going <laughs> susan you had a question yes i'm curious to know how you got started in writing the comic strip it was a lifelong ambition i knew when i was six years old what i wanted to be i loved the comics what we call the funny papers it's the only ambition 
uh, meager though it may seem. It's the only thing I ever wanted to do, and I just kept drawing and drawing. And I used to take the train from St. Paul down to Chicago with my cartoons and get rejected and take the train back and start all over again. <laughs> I used to work for the Art Instruction Correspondence Course as an instructor, and I used to judge the little draw-me ads that you see in the magazines. My friend Charlie Brown and I, uh, whose name I took, were the judges of that contest. So that was one of the ways I got started. I want to know, Jill, how many Snoopies you have. We at one time had four on my daughter's bed. I don't have any Snoopy dolls. No! No Snoopy? This is shocking. <laughs> this, no! If she has a Garfield, I'm going to be mad. I don't have a Garfield either. I have three originals on my walls. That's all that's on the walls of my apartment. <laughs> and a stuffed polar bear, and that's it. <laughs> Not that I don't like them, it's just that my life being on the road, my whole life is still in cardboard boxes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's Flash Beagle, Charlie Brown, Monday, April 16th at 8 p.m.